I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise today. You know, here it is, uh, already the second week of, of December. December. That's right. I mean, we're fastly approaching <clears throat> Christmas. I know, and so I've got to do Christmas shopping and think about Christmas dinner, and I'm sure you're happy about that. Oh, yes, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> because most I definitely. come out of retirement of cooking and, and cook you your know, favorite things. You know, talking about Christmas, it's family time usually. Yes. Well, I, I'm talking about a message I preach, where do you belong? And it's actually talking about being in the family of God. When, yes. you, when you become born again and you receive Christ as your Savior, you become part of the family of God. Yes. And in the family of God, we all have, should be involved with different duties, just like in the family. I mean, when I was growing up, my sister and I, I mean, every night, uh, we had to do the dishes, and I would eat real fast because I hated to dry, <laughs> and because we didn't have dishwasher back uh, in them no, days. No, we didn't. And, we and were so the dishwasher. I was we? the dishwasher, and that's why I'd rather wash than I had to dry. So I'd hurry so I could start. <laughs> so you could wash. So I could wash. You still had rather wash than dry. Oh yes, <laughs> I still had all this. Year. And another chore I had, and some of the more mature audience can remember this. Johnson's Paste Wax, oh and you my. had linoleum floor. Yes. You had to get out on your hands and knees and put and that wax it. on. We're going then, way back, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> we're going way back when, you know, back in the the, the early 50s. Uh -huh. And uh, then you had to let it, it dry off, you know, mm -hmm. like you do a car, really, now that or used to anyway. And then you had to go back and buff, buff it off, you That's know. That's right. But that was my chores. And yes. then I had to take, I had to mow the grass. And, mm -hmm. And sis had tr chores. I know w with our kids growing up, they had things that they had to do because That's right. they're a part of the family. They're responsible for things. And as being a part of the family of God, we we need to begin to to plug in with our talents and and yes. and, and, and whatever we can do That's all. to enhance. Wherever there's a need. Wherever there's a need. Yes. So why don't we go right now where I'm talking uh, on a subject, where do you belong? I want to look at some things from the Word of God today about belonging. Now, I'm going to use Paul as an example here because he's the one that talks about this. Paul knew where he belonged. Do you know where you belong? He said in Acts 27, 23, For last night an angel of the God to whom I belong." Hello now, come on. And whom I serve stood beside me. Paul was secure because he knew that God, the great I am, he belonged with him. He was secure because he knew that he belonged with El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. He was secure in where he belonged because he belonged with Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. He knew where he belonged because he belonged with Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer or the Lord our, phys our physician. Come on. God is our heavenly father and he loves us. You need to get to the point, I don't care if nobody else loves you. I don't care if nobody else cares about you. You can say, I belong to God. I'm part of the family of God. I can be secure. I can stand strong. I can throw my shoulders and back and say, I'm part of the family. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You know, many people feel insecure because they don't feel like they belong. Now, you could come to this church and don't feel like you belong because you don't get involved. You know, I've had people say, well, I don't have no friends. Well, go make some. 
if you want to have a friend, you got to be friendly yourself. Hello. You see, you know, Paul knew where he belonged. He belonged in the family of God where God's power was available at all times, anywhere, everywhere, all the time. He was a part of the, of the family that has more than enough, the family of God. He was a part of, a fa- of the healthiest family in the world. God's family should be healthy. Hello. God, being a part of God's family, means that he is our deliverer, he's our provider, he is our protector, and the list goes on. You there? Turn to your neighbor and say, where do you belong? Now turn to him again and say, I'm a part of the family of God. I belong to the family of God. (laughs) Come on now. You see, because we have been born again, we belong to God. We belong in the family of God. What is the responsibility of the head of the family? To take care of the family, to lead the family, to provide for the family. That's what God does because we are part of his family. You know, if you, if you have possession of something, it's your responsibility to take care of it. How many have a car that belongs to you? Whose responsibility is it to take care of that car? Yeah, it ain't nobody else's. Now, you may, you may tell one of the kids to go out and wash it, but you're still taking the responsibility for taking care of the car. The garage is not going to come down and get the car and bring it in and do, the annual, do a checkup on it. It's your responsibility to take it when it's time to get a checkup. Hello? Since you belong to God and part of his family, he has taken on the responsibility of taking care of you. There's no use of you to feel lonely and that you don't belong. Whenever that feeling comes or it tries to come on you, you need to just scream out with a loud voice, I belong to God. I'm not alone. He will take care of me. Now, Paul knew where he belonged. He belonged in the body of Christ. Ephesians 2, 19. I'm going to read the Message Bible here. That's plain enough, isn't it? You are no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You are no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. He's using all of us. Irrespective of how we got here in what he's building, he used the apostles, the prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you into in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. I want you to notice Jesus is the cornerstone. They didn't know what I was going to preach this morning, but Rich reached back and got Eugene's song there. I love that song. How many of you like remember that song? And we sang it this morning. He's the cornerstone. But remember, Peter said, we are lively stones being built together in the family of God. Each one of us fits into the family of God. There are no misfits. You belong in the family of God. And he'll find a place to fit you in 
Now, you know, I, I, I was watching them as they put some rock down here. You know, in, on the youth building, you know that first of all, they're just that metal post out there. But then how many of you watch them put the, they put the rock around it, right? I noticed that they had to get rock and sometimes had to chip it off to shape it to fit it in the place that it's supposed to be. Anybody ever watch anybody do that? Anybody ever watch? I, I watch when I associate pastor, I watch a bricklayer laying the brick and they get close to the end. Now a whole brick won't fit in there. They're coming up to the corner. They got a tool, they take it and they cut that brick off and make it fit right in there perfectly. Hey, that's what God does with you. You may have some rough edges. You may have some rough corners. But he knocks them off of you. And fits you in where he needs you in his body. The body of Christ. You, if you've been born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you belong in the body. You have a place in the body. I don't care where you come from, what you've done, what your name is, what you look like, what color you are, how much education you have, how much, whether you don't have any education at all. We are all part of the family of God. We all belong together. And if everybody gets in their place and fits together, man, look what we can accomplish. Remember in the Old Testament at the Tower of Babel when they all got together where they belonged together, God said, hey, I got to do something here because he knew when you come together and you all belong together and you all have the, you're on the same page, you all have the same definition, you all have the same vision, you're all saying the same thing, I'll tell you what, something starts happening. That's what's, going, that's what's happening here at Ramah. We are coming together with the vision. We are putting it on that screen. Every Sunday we're showing you the vision of Ramah Bible Church. That is where the word is preached. That's where we have a good youth and children's program and a good music program. Well, that's why we're asking everybody to get involved because we all belong here. You belong in this place. God brought you here. Even if you just brought here as a student, God brought you here for a reason. He's got a place for you. He's going to fit you in it. Get it. That's why we tell you, get involved. And I'm going to tell you what, something's going to take place around here. You are a part of his kingdom. You belong in the family of God and you have work to do. I know all of us, most of us grew up in a family. I, I had, in my family, I had, a ch I had chores I had to do. Anybody, anybody that way? I had to keep the grass mowed. Yeah. And at supper time, we used to, it's dinner now, but we called it supper back. Anybody, anybody know when we used to call it supper? It was breakfast, lunch. I mean, it was breakfast, lunch, and supper, yeah. Supper, yeah. Yeah, breakfast, dinner, and supper. I'll get it here in a minute. I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. But we got, we, and I had, to, I had we, my sister and I, there's just the two of us, so we had to clean the kitchen every night. Well, I would eat real fast so I could wash because I hated drying. <laughs> I still don't like to dry. I, if I eat a bowl of cereal or something, I'll go wash the bowl out, then I put a cup towel down and I just set it on the sink and somebody else can take care of drying it. That's their, but we all have responsibilities. See, in, in the family. How many of you grew up in a family where you had several siblings? And everybody had a certain job to do. Oh, there was a job that I, don't, I hated. 
I didn't like to do it, and I guarantee you I got to go have some help with this with some of, my, some of the more mature people like me. We're not old, we're just mature. <laughs> we had what you call linoleum floors. Anybody know about linoleum floor? And we had something called Johnson's Pace Wax. <laughs> you get out on your hands and knees and you put that on. And then you have to wait till it forms that white coat dries. Now you got to get back down there on your hands and knees and you got to polish it off. Oh, I see. I got some help. I got some people out there with me. <laughs> That was a chore. That was my chore. That was part of my family chore to do the kitchen and the bathroom because they had to know you in both those places, and I had to do it. And I tell you what, I get I get upset if somebody I had just got to putting that polish down, and somebody wants to come and walk on my floor. <laughs> we all belong to the family of God. And we all have a place. And if we'll just stay steady where we are in the local family. See, we got the body of Christ, and that's in my next, that's, a, that's, that's what's next. We're in the body of Christ, okay? But we have a local body. And we need to get involved. Because we belong to Christ. You know, some people say, well, I'm so unworthy. Are you born again? God never made an unworthy person. When you were born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, you became worthy. You became something. You became somebody. So quit letting the devil tell you that you're unworthy and that you don't belong and that, that because of your past. Hey, you don't have a past. The Word of God says that when you become a part of the family of God, the Word of God says that that doesn't exist anymore. The person that made all of those mistakes, the person that did all of those deeds is dead. Yes. Gone. Yes. Done away with. Yes. You become a brand new person yes. in Christ yes. with a brand new book yes. to write on the pages. Yes. They're blank. You're a part of the family of God now. You can write a new book. Yeah. And you can put on there, whatever you mean, I put my name, Kenneth Hagen, a part of the family of God. Yeah. The old Kenneth Hagen died. The new Kenneth Hagen is alive in the family of God. I belong and I'm going to do what God told me to do. And then I can continue writing all of the things that God said. God said, I'm, he I'm healed. God said, I'm whole. God said, I'm the righteousness of, of God in Christ. God said that I can have whatever he said belongs to me. Ooh. Glory to God. I don't know about you. I done got myself excited preaching about being a part of the family. Come on now. <laughs> you know, Dad said again in that, in, that, in that same book, Knowing What Belongs to You, he said, many Christians don't know that all the blessings are already theirs. And they're praying and fasting to get the blessing. Why do you have to pray and fast to get something that already belongs to you? If I got a lawnmower sitting in the garage, I don't have to sit in the house and say, well, I sure wish my lawn would get mowed. I, I, if I had a lawn, you know, I, I need to mow my lawn. You don't have to sit in there and think, all you got to do is go out there and crank a thing up and go, it, it's already, it belongs to you. Too many Christians are trying to get what already belongs to them. 
Why? Because we're part of the family of God. Glory to God. I don't know about y'all. I done got happy today. I'm part of the greatest, the best, the biggest family in the world. And it can't be taken away from me. Say this with me. I am a part of the family of God. God is the father of this family. And because I'm in the family, everything that God says belongs to me is mine. As I was talking about the subject of where, you, where do you belong, if you're already in the family of God, you belong working in, in, for God in some area. But if, you, if you're not in the family of God, then you need to know Him and you need to be in God's family. If you are there watching right now, and you have never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or if you have accepted Him as your personal Savior, but you know you're not living right, and you need to pray this prayer in rededication. I want you to repeat this prayer after me with, with Lynette right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. For your son, Jesus. For your son, Jesus. I believe. I believe. That he died on the cross. That he died on the cross. For my salvation. For my salvation. I believe. I believe. That as I confess that with my mouth. That as I confess that with my mouth. And believe in my heart. And believe in my heart. That I will become a part of the family of God. That I will become a part of the family of God. And I now belong to God. And I now belong to God. And I thank you. And I thank you. For helping me. For helping me. To find my place in the family. To find my place in the family. And to work for you. And to work for you. I thank you for it. I thank you for in it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us for salvation or rededication, I would ask that you go to your computer and send us an email. Send it to partner services, service at rhema.org and, uh, and tell us this. And we, we, will, we, will, we will get back to you. So partner service at rhema.org and say, I prayed the prayer of salvation or I prayed the prayer to rededicate my life to God at, on the television broadcast. We want to hear from you. And you know, honey, it just so thrills us when we get those oh, yes. emails. Um, and I know those emails are sent up to our office. Right. And I'll tell you what, we have a time of rejoicing when someone is welcomed into the kingdom of oh, God. That's, that, that's, oh, that's, that's the day. In fact, the Bible says the angels rejoice. Yes, when yes. When someone becomes a part of the family of God. That's right. Well, honey, we have an offer this month. Um, I love this little mini book called In Him. Yes. Your dad uh, wrote that and it has scripture references. You know, you can go to those references and yellow them in your own Bible. Right. And then uh, four CDs, Doing the Works of Jesus by your dad. And I especially, this is one of my favorite books that you have written. And that is um, How to Listen to Your Heart. Yes. Yes. Listen to the spirit, man, on the yeah. inside. That's listen what. To your heart. That's what listening to your heart means. Now, what kind of what kind of deal have we got for them? Well, normally that offer is thirty eight dollars and ninety cents. But right. you know, we like to give bargains. Uh, yeah, especially uh, this is a good time of year to give a good bargain. Yes, yes, and so we're offering this for $23.35. That's a savings of $15.55. Oh, that's a that's great a savings. So go, savings. Go right now and, 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 and order that. Go to the computer and order it because that's the best way to get it. That's right. Now, you, all of our material is available at rhema.org and you go to the bookstore and all of our, our, our CDs and MP3s yes. and our books. And, and and the legacy Bible that we've just come out with this yes. past year. Yes. Uh, but all of these orders 
in order for you to get them before Christmas, have to we have to receive them here in our office by December the 19th. That's right. In order to guarantee that it will get there, all That's right? That's right. So uh, go ahead and order now. Yes, go ahead and order well, now. Well, another thing, something that's happening in January is our spring intake for Raymond Bible Training oh, College. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. And so, you know, if you want to know more about the Word or if God has been dealing with you uh, about something special that He has for you, yes. you need to come to Rhema where you can apply online today at rbtc.org. That spring intake starts January, January the 11th. January the 11th, it starts the spring, the spring uh, uh, intake semester or whatever yes. you call it. Yeah. Can you believe it's going to be 2019 just really soon? Oh no, I can't <laughs> really. But hey, speaking of 2019, listen, Winter Bible Seminar and Homecoming, Worldwide Homecoming. Yes. They're coming from all of the schools all over the world, February the 17th through the 22nd. That's a Sunday night through a Friday night. Yes. So you and we have then on Monday we have services uh, all. All during the day and, yes. and the eve and and then at night, That's morning right. and off in the afternoon mm -hmm. and then at night the That's services. Right. And so uh, <clears throat> if you want the details about it, just go to rama.org and there's all the information about that. In fact, if you want to know anything about our ministry, just go to rama.org right there. But it, let me remind you again. If you prayed that prayer with us for rededication or for salvation, please go to and email us at partnerservice at rhema.org. We want to hear from you. And we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. If we're going to do the works that Jesus did, we better find out how he did them then, huh? Doing the Works of Jesus, a powerful four CD series by Kenneth E. Hagan. In the book, Listen to Your Heart, Kenneth W. Hagan explains how to tell the difference between your heart, your mind, and your senses, and learn how to listen to your heart. Plus the mini book, In Him, by Kenneth E. Hagan. Learn who you are and what you have in Christ. The books and CDs can be yours today for only $23.35 by calling toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or just log on anytime at rhema.org, day or night. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rhema Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rhema, please call, write, or visit rhema.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.